Welcome to Unit 7, Video 2, Spectra. By the end of this video, you should understand the wave-particle duality of light, and you should be able to explain how an atom's unique spectrum is formed. So as we saw in class, when you heat a pure sample of an element, it emits light, but it doesn't emit all the colors of light. It only emits certain colors when heated. So why is this the case? Well, in 1900, Max Planck proposed the following. He said that objects must em emit or absorb energy in pieces or chunks. In other words, objects do not emit a continuous stream of all energies. They only emit energy in small packets. He called these packets quanta. A quantum means fixed amount. It's not continuous. There are only certain quantities that are allowed. So consider the following analogy. Imagine you have a ramp and a flight of stairs. If you're climbing the ramp, you can be anywhere on the ramp. You could have your foot here, you could have your foot here, you could have your foot here. There's a continuous possibility of places for your feet to be. However, if you're climbing stairs, your feet can only actually be on each step. It's not possible for your feet to be hovering between two steps. There are only certain allowable places for your feet to be. Furthermore, the distance between those places is fixed. This idea was further supported by an experiment done by Einstein. Einstein discovered the photoelectric effect. He found that electrons are emitted from the surface of a metal when light strikes the metal. But interestingly, he found that light must have a certain energy in order to cause the electrons to be emitted. Simply just shining light on a piece of metal did not always cause electrons to be emitted. They had to have a certain, it had to have a certain energy. He also found that certain metals only emit electrons when certain frequencies or certain colors of light strike them. So in other words, when light was shown at a piece of sodium, it only emitted electrons when it was hit with violet light, not red light or, or green light or orange light, only violet light. So this led Einstein to propose that maybe energy isn't really a wave at all. We think of energy like a wave. You probably recall the double slit experiment from physics class. This is evidence that energy behaves like a wave because you get an interference pattern when you shine light at two slits. But sometimes energy acts like a particle too. Planck's theory tells us that energy comes in little bits or packets. And Einstein's photoelectric effect suggests that there's something hitting the electrons, causing them to actually come off of the metal. That sounds a lot like a particle behavior. So we actually don't have an answer to this question. We actually tend to think of energy as both waves and particles. We call this wave-particle duality. This is completely mind-blowing, but you, the best you can do is kind of just try to make a model in your head. We can think of photons as tiny packets of energy, kind of like a particle. It's discrete. It has a starting point and an ending point. Different wavelengths of energy carry different amounts of energy per photon. So if you want to picture this uh, as a diagram, looking here, you can see we've represented energy as a wave here. It's continuous or energy as a stream of photons, a stream of packets that is not continuous. A great analogy here is if you take a bottle of ketchup and turn it over and just squeeze it, you'll get ketchup coming out in a continuous stream. However, if you take little packets of ketchup from a fast food restaurant and open each one individually, you'll get little packets of ketchup, little bits of ketchup, one from each packet. That's more like a stream of photons. For now, we're going to think a little bit about light as if it were a stream of photons. So, how do we get the spectra that we saw in class? Well, first we have to excite the atom. How do we excite an atom? We add energy to it. When an atom has gained energy, we say that it's in its excited state. 
So here is an excited lithium atom. We've added energy to it, and we're representing that it's excited by the little squiggly red lines. Eventually, this atom will lose the energy that it gained. So first, when we added energy, it jumped up to a higher energy. But when it loses that energy again, it's going to emit the amount of energy that it originally gained. If it gained this much energy, it will emit that same amount of energy. Recall that different energies of light corresponds to different colors. Therefore, when an excited lithium atom releases energy, it so happens that the energy it releases has, uh, corresponds to the red color of light. So a red photon is emitted. With our eyes, we see the color red. We can define this as uh, these two states as excited and ground state. The excited state is when an atom has excess energy. This is the first part where the lithium atom gained energy. We can also talk about the ground state. This is an atom in its lowest possible energy state. So an atom might be excited like this guy, or this guy, or this guy is really excited. Or it might be in its ground state, like that guy, that guy, or that guy. No, that's James Franco. He's definitely in the ground state. So, let's talk about how this relates to the spectra we see. Recall that if you split white light with a prism, you get a continuous spectrum. You see all the colors of the rainbow with no gaps in between, just like we saw from the filament light bulb yesterday, uh, in class. However, when we split the, the light emitted by a, an excited element, we get a discrete spectrum. We get a spectrum with spaces in between. Rather than all of the colors showing up along the bottom here, we only get four of the colors showing up in this particular case. So let's review our findings so far before we try to explain them. First, we found that when we excite a hydrogen atom, light is produced. We've also found that if we split that light with a diffraction grating, we see distinct bands of color, not a continuous spectrum. We call this the emission spectrum. So Niels Bohr developed a model of the atom that helps explain the emission spectrum of hydrogen and other atoms. He said that atoms must have certain allowable energy levels where electrons can exist. In other words, electrons can be in a low energy level or a higher energy level. He named the energy levels with numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. We use the letter N to abbreviate the name of the energy level, or the number of the energy level. So here's a picture of the Bohr atom. Here is the first energy level, the one closest to the nucleus, n equals 1. n equals 2 is an energy level slightly further out. n equals 3 is even further out. As you move away from the nucleus, the amount of energy increases, and the uh, number of the energy increases. It's important to note that as we move away from the nucleus, the amount of energy increases. So the lowest energy level is n equals 1. The highest energy level pictured here is n equals 3, although it can go higher than that. It's also important to note that electrons cannot exist between energy levels. Just like the staircase example, electrons can only exist on a step, per se, or in an energy level. It cannot exist between them. Therefore, it's only possible for an electron to move from one energy level to another, to another. It is not possible for an electron to move from one energy level to in between two energy levels. That's not a possibility. So let's take a look at a, a diagram of a Bohr model of the atom to try to explain where this spectrum comes from. Here we have the nucleus in the center, indicated by the plus sign. I'm going to draw in an electron right here in the first energy level, n equals 1. Let's say this electron gets zapped with a photon. I'm going to use a squiggly arrow to represent a photon. That will 
cause this electron to jump up to a higher energy level. So our electron is now in the n equals 2 energy level. In order to jump from n equals 1 to n equals 2, the electron must have gained the exact amount of energy that represents the difference between n equals 1 and n equals 2. Eventually, this electron will return back to n equals 1. When that happens, it will emit the exact same amount of energy that it gained to jump up. That amount of energy, again, is the difference between n equals 1 and n equals 2. That particular photon of energy that is emitted falls somewhere in the visible spectrum, and we see it as a color. That produces one of the bands in our visible spectrum. Now consider the fact that there are all different kinds of transitions that this electron could go through. Maybe later on it gets zapped with a larger photon. We'll represent that photon with green because that's higher in energy than red. When that happens, because it has more energy, maybe it jumps all the way up to the third energy level. Eventually, though, it's going to return back to where it came from, and when it does so, it's going to emit that same amount of energy that it gained. So it will emit a green photon, which we see as the color green. All these transitions produce unique colors that we see as the bands of light in our spectra. So to review, the excited state is actually the, when the electrons are in a higher energy level than their ground state. So first, an electron absorbs a photon to become excited. Then the electron returns to a lower energy level and the photon is emitted. Depending on the size of the photon, which remember corresponds to the difference between the two energy levels, we'll see a particular color. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at the wave-particle duality of light. We said that light often behaves like a wave, but then often it exhibits properties of a particle as well. We called these particles of light photons, or packets of energy. Then we explained how the atom's unique spectrum is formed. Recall that when an electron is hit with a packet of energy or a photon of energy, it jumps up to a higher energy level. When it drops back down, it releases that same photon, which falls somewhere in the visible spectrum, and we see it as a color.